meteorologist Mark Molnar with my final 2018-2019 winter weather outlook. I must admit my first winter outlook at the beginning right around the end of October beginning of November had many flaws to it. It took into account many factors that are not in play at this point. So this is why I'm releasing my final winter weather outlook. I admit in my first winter weather outlook I was wrong on many things and this one is drastically different. It takes into account much more as well as something about El Nino that I did not know three to four weeks ago. So let's get right into these factors. That's the great thing about the wild world of weather. It's constantly changing. So let's get right into the factors. We're gonna take into account the NAO index, the PDO index, these factors, these telekinetics are going crazy this time of year setting us up already in November for record snowfall, as well as the El Nino looking to be a weaker than I originally expected. So that's one of my flaws. I was looking at more of a moderate El Nino, but it looks like this one is going to be more on the weaker side, which is pretty significant. That really plays a difference here, as well as record snowfalls here in Siberia, northwestern North America, especially the Yukon, all the way down into portions of eastern North America, well above normal already for this time of year. So that's what we're looking at here for the factors. We're setting us up here. Very negative NAO index here going into portions of the beginning of December here. So that's really going to play into a lot of things. Keep those systems along the east coast of the United States blocked as well as strengthening as well as lots of phasing and this will set us up for what could be a record-breaking winter for not only cold but snowfall as well let's get right into the factors we're going to start off with the pacific here originally what i thought here along the western portion of south america along the equatorial region here all the way through the central pacific i thought that the highest sea surface anomalies were going to be right in the eastern pacific closer to 1 to 1.25 degrees Celsius above normal. I'm no longer thinking that. It's looking like most of the heavier uh, sea surface temperature, temperature anomalies here that are, are much higher, like the 1 to 1.25, they're more located in the Central Pacific. That makes a huge difference for North America since we're looking at about a half a degree Celsius to three quarters of a degree Celsius above normal. That pretty much puts us right in the middle of a weak El Nino instead of a moderate. So that being said, I want to make note here. There's other anomalies here that I'm very interested in. The one here into south of Alaska here, the Gulf of Alaska. Look at this all the way through the Aleutian Islands here. We're looking at a sea surface temperature anomaly well above normal all the way along the west coast of the United States here, the Northwest North America. That's feeding into that pattern PDO index really going crazy here, pushing the jet streams further north. And here along the U.S. East Coast, look at this sea surface temperature anomaly. This is another one that's of interest that caught my eye. Lots of warm above normal uh, sea surface temperatures along the East Coast of the United States, which will play into the baroclinic zones, setting up those low pressure systems, strengthening along the U.S. East Coast creating quite some monster storms as they meet up with this Arctic air and you get all this warm sea surface temperatures along the coast. This really feeds into all of that moisture that will be, I would say, raining out along the U.S. East Coast. But even the deep south here, we're going to see quite a bit of snowflake action. Along the Greenland here area, that's where in Northeast Canada, this is where we'll have those real positive heights, negative NAO index. This is gonna play right into our hand for snowfall along the US East Coast. So there is the map, sea surface temperature anomalies. That is what I'm looking at. This is very significant change from my first winter outlook. So there you have it, El Nino models. Some of them still taking it above the one degree Celsius mark. I'm pretty much in agreement now that this El Nino index will pretty much stay right around a half a degree Celsius. We probably peaked in some of the calculations here of El Nino right around half a degree Celsius to three quarters of a degree Celsius. Perfect scenario for a weak El Nino. So let's get right into the other factors. Snow cover. Let's take a look at that snow cover map. I can't show you Siberia up here, it's way off the map, but trust me, they have been seeing significant snowfalls. This is really, really in correlation here to Eastern, Central and Eastern North America. This is gonna play right into our hand here. 
and across the Yukon, portions of Canada, all the way through the eastern portion of the United States, Great Lakes, especially the northeast mid-Atlantic here, eastern Canada, we've seen much above normal snowfall cover, especially for November already. So there you have it. There's the snowfall factors playing into our hand here. And of course, I want to show you that map again of the PDO index here, keeping the jet streams riding high across the western North American continent, keeping it drought ridden up here, drought stricken, I should say, across Pacific Northwest. Here across the eastern portion of the United States, those positive heights here over Greenland, that is really going to keep the NAO index, for the most part this winter, a negative scenario, which means a lot of blocking going on once these East Coast storms do get a chance to ride up along the East Coast. A lot of times they won't have many places to go to exit to the Northeast here because they'll be being blocked by a very strong high pressure system. So let's get right into the pattern. Take a look at the pattern across much of North America. As I showed you here, take a look at those jet streams riding high, keeping much of the U.S. West Coast pretty much void of any moisture. There will be times here where the subtropical jet does bring some beneficial rains to portions of the desert southwest in Southern California, but for the most part, I'm thinking near normal to below normal precip wise. That jet stream rides along into portions of Texas, the Gulf of Mexico, and this is key, right up the east coast here with all that blocking to the northeast part of the North American continent. Its interior portions, not just the interior portions of the U.S. East Coast from the Appalachians on eastward, but that's where I'm starting to see the indications from the Panhandle of Florida all the way up the U.S. East Coast, even coastal areas. We could be looking at a blockbuster winter with record cold and record snowfall here. So stay tuned for that. Lots of phasing going on. You see that cold northern jet stream here. Often see with jet streams riding well up here into portion of Western North America, you always get the major trough here into the eastern portion of the United States. And climate models pretty much are showing that we're pretty much socked in here with a lot of cold air that will be feeding into all of these monstrous systems here across the U.S. East Coast and the Gulf Coast for that matter. So let's get right into snowfall. This is the map you've been waiting for. Quite a big changes here from my first outlook. We're getting rid of a lot of that above normal snowfall here into the desert southwest. Pro probably pretty much near normal. It's right along much of the west here though. We're looking 25 to 50 percent below normal. Interior portions of California up to the Pacific Northwest into portions of southwestern Canada here. This is not good news for the drought and the wildfire situation, but it's back here in the east from Texas all the way to portions of the Gulf Coast, even the Panhandle of Florida, all the way up into the Carolinas, Georgia, the Appalachians, and up into portions of Virginia, the Mid-Atlantic, Pennsylvania, especially Eastern Pennsylvania, upstate New York, into Southern New England, 75% above your normal snowfall this winter. That is extremely significant, especially even for coastal areas that will be getting in on the act of a lot of these coastal systems that stay snow instead of rain, snow mix, or sleet and freezing rain. So across much of the Great Lakes into portions of the Mississippi Valley, yes, we will see 25% above normal, even through the Great Lakes here into portions of the upper Midwest. So you'll want to watch for that as well. We're not looking at anything uh, changing with this sort of scenario here. So these major snow belt areas of the Great Lakes, yep, you will be getting hit this winter and look for about a 25% above normal. But as I said, the bullseye of the snowfall, bam to New York, all the way over to Hartford, Connecticut, New York City, Harrisburg, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Washington, D.C., Atlantic City, Philadelphia, all these cities down and through Roanoke and Richmond, even Charleston, South Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, all these areas to Tallahassee, Florida. We could be looking at 75% above your normal snowfall. Not too shabby here in Texas for snowfall as well. Portions 25 up to 50% above your normal. So much of the deep south really affected here as well as the U.S. East Coast. And that will be quite a difference here this winter with your snowfall totals. Now, do we have a lot of cold air to feed all that snow? Yes, we do. But before we do that, precipitation across much of North America, 
There it is, correlating to below normal precipitation as much as 25 to 50 percent below your normal Pacific Northwest, for the most part being the bullseye, into the Rocky Mountains, portions of the northern Rockies. And then it's here, from Texas, along the Gulf Coast, all the way up the U.S. East Coast. That pretty much correlates perfectly with our snowfall totals. We're looking about 50 to 75 percent above your normal for precipitation totals. Even the Great Lakes, portions of the Midwest and Ohio Valley, looking about 25% above your normal. So let's get right into, there it is, temperatures across much of North America. I have changed drastically this map as different information has come in. But take a look at the pattern. One thing I have not changed, the Pacific Northwest remains well above normal, about 50% in many cases 25 to 50 percent above your normal temperatures here across much of the u.s east coast deep south look at this four degrees celsius below your normal even the florida panhandle the carolinas georgia the appalachian mountains all the way up into pennsylvania new york portions of southern new england this is pretty significant this means plenty of cold air to feed all of these U.S. East Coast snowstorms, as well as these ones ejecting out of the Gulf of Mexico, meeting up with all of that cold air. This spells a lot of trouble. Many of you in the Deep South, you're looking at some of these temperatures. Well, four degrees Celsius doesn't sound like much, but averaged over a couple months, it can be pretty significant and enough to get many cold air outbreaks, especially when storm time comes along. When these low pressure systems strengthen, a lot of them manufacture their own cold air, or they're strong enough and become a negatively tilted trough to drag all of that major Arctic air into the backside and the northern side of the storm. So there you have it across the U.S. East Coast, significant. This is a major development here across the U.S. East Coast, Gulf of Mexico, Appalachians, if you're anywhere from the Appalachians southward to the Gulf Coast and then Appalachians on eastward to the U.S. East Coast, this is going to be quite a winter for you. Records will be broken here across the Northeast. So there is your temperature anomalies, pretty significant. So that gets us right into the snowfall. I'm going to zoom in on the Northeast here. I'm going to leave you with this map. Pretty much just summarizes what I showed you into the snowfall map of the United States and Canada. Binghamton, does Harrisburg, Wilkes-Barre, New York City, Hartford, Connecticut, Washington, D.C. 75% above your normal snowfall. If you remember a lot of the weak El Nino years, going back even to the 1990s, as many of you remember, some of those weak El Nino years, we were seeing block extreme snowfall here across much of the Northeast corridor here. So that correlates perfectly here across the Northeast. Even places like Erie, Pennsylvania, you're not gonna be let off easy here, 25% above your normal snowfall totals, even through the Great Lakes here. So the rule is here across the Northeast. If you're anywhere from the I-81 corridor, portions of the Appalachians here on eastward, you are going to see quite a winter this year, not just for record cold, but record snowfall as well. That'll, I'll leave you with that map. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at MediaMark, subscribe to me on YouTube at MediaMark, comments, Twitter at WX Northeastern, Google Plus at MediaMark. You can visit my website at MediaMark.com and WeatherNortheastern.com. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you found this update much more helpful than the previous winter weather outlook. Thank you for joining me here at MediaMark's Weather Northeastern.